Hi listeners, welcome to the new session on contracts in event management. I am Dr. Aravind Tiyas, an edutech expert for the past 11 years, specialized in social media marketing, e-commerce, e-tailing and business law. I believe you want to start your own event management company and make a good livelihood. In that case, first and foremost, you need to make sure where you stand today. That two things that you must have to succeed in the cutthroat business are social networking skills and business development skills. Once you make up your mind to venture into event management business, you will have to work really hard and tirelessly. It is not only your experience and knowledge which shall determine your success, but beside, it also largely depend on your contacts, that is public relation, marketing, negotiation and entrepreneur skill. Even management as an industry is on the road. It is very broad industry. Broadly, this industry serves to personal, organizational, cultural and leisure event categories, which can be further categorized into social and corporate events. The market is customer specific. Since clients have more purchasing power coupled with low brand shifting cost, the booming India economy has sent out a sudden spike in the number of events taking place nowadays. The situation has fulfilled the demand for talented event management personnel. Eventually, in the days to come, the demand for creative and hardworking result-oriented event managers is only going to escalate. Lack of entry barriers has greatly multiplied the number of players, thereby increasing the competition making this industry one of the most competitive industry in India. So it is mandatory to get your new venture registered under the Companies Act. If it is a firm, it need to be registered under Indian Partnership Act or Limited Liability Partnership. If you have opened an establishment in India, it become mandatory to register under the Shops and Establishment Act. An even management company is just like any other entity. Hence, all the rules and procedures, formalities associated with starting a new company in India shall apply to an event management business also. The event management company has to know more on Indian Contract Act since they are dealing with the different clients. So both the parties are equally liable as done by the parties if there is a legal agreement enforceable by law. Thus, this unit, while emphasizing the importance of contract, in event production, we'll also discuss the elements, types and components of contract as well as the managerial aspects of contract in event management. After this video, you should be able to understand the meaning of contracts and its type, describe the elements and components of a contract. Before we move into the technicalities of a contract, it is important to understand the meaning of a contract and its elements. The term business contract is actually not defined under any statute. Rather, this term has been coined from the commercial transaction when one person deals with the other person with an objective to earn profit from the sale. Therefore, the contracts which are intended by the parties for commercial purposes like a furtherance of their business activities may be named as business contract. Contract means an agreement between two or more parties creating mutual obligation enforceable by law. So the element enforceable by law is mandatory. The basic element required for agreement to be a legal enforceable contract are mutually consent expressed by a valid offer and acceptance with adequate consideration and a capacity to enter into a contract. Let's see what are the essentials of a valid contract in terms of a section 10 of the act. All agreements are contracts. If they are made by free consent of the parties competent to the contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object and not expressly declared to be void. Thus, in order to create a valid contract, the following element should be present. Intention to create legal obligation through offer and acceptance should be present. Second one is free consent of the parties is necessary. 
Third one is competency or capacity of parties to enter into contract must be ensured. The fourth one is lawful consideration and lawful object should be present. And the fifth one is agreement not expressly declared to be void. The above said elements may be further analyzed as under offer and acceptance. In the first place, there must be an offer and uh, the said offer must have been accepted. Such offer and acceptance should create a legal obligation between the parties. This should result in a moral duty on the person who promises or offer to do something. Similarly, this should also give a right to the promise to claim its fulfillment. Such duties and rights should be legal and not merely moral. Second one is consent. The consent element is the consent of the parties. Consent means knowledge and approval of the party's concern. This can be understood as identity of minds, understanding the terms like uh, consensus ad item. Consensus ad item means it's a maxim. It is called as identity of minds. Further, such a consent must be free. Consent would be considered as free consent if it is not validated by the coercion, undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation or mistake. Wherever the consent of any party is not free, the contract is voidable at the option of that party. The third element is the capacity of the parties. To make a valid contract, capacity or incapacity of a person could be decided only after reckoning various factors. Section 11 of Indian Contract Act 1872 elaborates on the issue by providing that a person who has attained the age of majority, second is of uh, unsound mind and is disqualified from entering into a contract by any law which he is subject should be considered as a not competent to enter into a contract. Therefore, law prohibits a minor, a person unsound mind, a person who are otherwise disqualified like an alien enemy, insolvents, convicts, etc. from entering into a contract. The fourth element is presence of a lawful consideration. Consideration would generally mean compensation for doing or omitting to do an act or deed. It is also referred to as quid pro quo, means something in return for another thing. Such as consideration should be a lawful consideration. We will have an example. A agrees to sell his books for B for 100 rupees. B's promise to pay 100 is the consideration for A's promise. And A's promise to sell the book is the consideration for B's promise to pay 100. Not expressly declared to be void. The last element to clinch a contract is that the agreement entered into for the purpose must not be which the law declares to be either legal or void. An illegal agreement is an agreement expressly or impliedly prohibited by law. A void agreement is one without any legal effects. An agreement enforceable by law is a contract. It creates legal obligation between parties. Every promise and every set of promise forming consideration for each other is an agreement. An agreement comes into existence when one party accepts a proposal put forward by other. In other words, agreement is a promise which result from acceptance of a proposal. Let's see what exactly proposal or offer. The word proposal and the word offer mean one and the same thing and therefore are used interchangeably. In terms of section 2a of the act, a person is said to make a proposal when he signifies to another his willingness to do or abstain from doing anything with a view to obtain the assent of that other to such act or abstinence. It must be appreciated that doing an act and not doing an act both have the same effect in the eyes of law, though one is a positive act and the other is a negative act. Hence, there are two important ingredients to an offer. Firstly, it must be expressions of willingness to do or to abstain from doing an act. Secondly, the willingness must be expressed with a view to obtain the assent of other party to whom the offer is made. See the illustration where A offers to sell his car to B, it conveys his willingness to do an act. Through this offer, not only willingness is being conveyed, but also an intention. Offer can be classified as general offer, special or specific offer until the general offer is 
retracted or withdrawn it can be accepted by anyone at any time where an offer is made to a particular and specified person it is specific offer only the person can accept such specific offer as it is special and exclusive to him what is invitation to offer an offer and invitation to offer are not one and the same an offer is defined like this an offer is definite it is an intention towards a contract an invitation to offer is an act precedent to making an offer it is done with intent to generally to induce and negotiate an invitation to offer gives rise to an offer after due negotiation and it cannot be per se accepted in terms of section 2b of the act a proposal or offer is said to have been accepted when the person to whom the proposal is made signifies is assent to the proposal to do or not to do something in short act of acceptance lies in signifying one's assent to the proposal from the above light of the basics of the contract we can discuss the components of a contract in event management the term and condition and clauses this we will discuss right now terms and conditions pertain to countless details of a specific event according to smith and uh, soberman this information is considered to be essential to any contract while the non essential ones are called warranties these are the several types of information which are usually given under terms and condition first one is contact information contact information is required in both client and supplier contracts the contract information should include the legal name of the client and producer organization and in case of suppliers and artist their stage name or company or individual names the name of the contact person or persons who has the signing authority the mailing address of uh, both the parties the physical address of uh, both parties if different from the mailing address the phone and fax numbers of uh, both parties the email address of uh, both parties next is even details even details is the core content of the contract and is required in both client and a supplier contract they provide a summary of all the points that have been agreed upon by both parties including venue details this contain information pertaining to time location of the event and event venue name including uh, specific room name if applicable address phone number contact person date start and end times of the event start time setup strike times of a suppliers and artist technical and the rehearsal time and the length of a performance as and when applicable the next one is specifics of a services or a products to be provided that is requisites this section covers the services or a product in detail for example a detailed list of audio equipment or audio console decor items and where and how they will be installed the name type schedule and length of a performance including the details of a number of persons involved wherever applicable another one is specifics of additional services to be provided in many cases there could be additional requirements by either the client or supplier or even producers for example the client might ask for food and beverage for staff in the green room the such additional services must be included in the terms and condition of the contract another one is compliance with regulations and standards as it goes without saying the wise use of resources compliance with the safety and design regulations and standards are to be followed throughout the event production however this should be form a part of all supplier contract the next is financial information financial details should be very much clear so as to avoid disconnect at the time of a payment the financial details primarily include information about compensation amount agreed upon by the parties for the services products to be provided taxes as applicable on the services and pro- products and deposits amount and deadlines depending on the even company's norms many production companies have a norm deposit for 50 to 75 percentage of the total contract value upon contract signing with the remainder due on or before the actual event date and electronic transfer fees charge 
has a processing fee on the online payment including credit card payment, wire transfer and electronic fund transfer. The next one is rider information. A contract rider is an additional provision, schedule, amendments or any other charges which are annexed to the original contract in order to modify it. The prime objective of the rider is to avoid rewriting and redrafting of the entire contract document. The riders can be attached to both the types of a contract, producer or client, a contract and producer supplier contract as well. Both the types of a contract, producer client contract and producer supplier contract as well. For example, the rider may include things like a transportation details such as first class return airfare and accommodation requirements. Let us discuss on clause in a legal agreement. Each clause address a specific aspect relating to the overall budget matter of the agreement. Clause aims at uh, clearly defining the duties, rights and privileges that each party has under the contract terms. Let us know about cancellation policy. This clause specifies as to how much of the total value of the contract usually as a percentage is payable to the producer or to the supplier in the case of a cancellation by a client or producer respectively. See about insurance for pre-event expenses. There are a lot of uh, pre-event expenses such as uh, programming, lighting, software building, sets or purchasing new equipment in the close all parties agree to purchase an insurance policy to cover the expenses. Take a glance on termination policy. This indicates the action to be taken if either party fails to perform any or all the respective obligation. For instance, it may include the amount payable to the parties and the amount, the time and method required to indicate termination. Another one is force majeure. This clause removes one or more the parties from liability due to unavoidable circumstances, preventing them from performing their obligation such as natural disaster, strikes and curfews. Another clause is indemnification clause. This clause indemnify or release from the liability to other party in case where losses or expenses have occurred. This clause should be used with a caution as it will limit the ability to recover damages for loss. Next is arbitration. This states that the dispute are to be resolved through arbitration rather than litigation. Alternate dispute resolution is the preferred method for solving the dispute. Another one is intellectual property. The clause is applicable in the case of a producer or artist contract which outlines any restriction on the recording of the performance and specifies the owner of the property. Let's get into the types of contract. Like in any business setup, the contracts are developed between the producer and the client and between the producer and the suppliers. In context of an event, the contractual relationship are between the suppliers and the independent event planner or management company and between the client or sponsor and the corporate event management team. There are three types of a contract used in the event industry. Cost plus, fixed price and incentives. Let us discuss on cost plus contract. This type of contract is either a cost plus percent age contract or cost plus fixed fee contract. In this case, the contractor passes on cost directly to the client wherein there is a common contract made between the event management company and its client or sponsor. Such as contract can be set up very quickly. The event company charges the client a percentage of the gross amount or straight fee on each of the elements of the event and uh, bills other costs to the client. Next one is fixed price contract. In a fixed price contract, one price is determined for the whole resource. This allows the suppliers or vendors the flexibility to use their own subcontracts to deliver the activities. In other words, it transfers the risk of a variation in cost to the supplier who must pay all the cost out of the fixed amount. This type of contract is most common, though in case um, 
many of the risk are transferred to contractors. The third one is incentive contracts. An incentive contract is also called as a percentage share of a profit. Such as contract is used commonly in corporate uh, sponsorship events, entrepreneurial events. Usually the in incentive contract works wherein there is an admission fee in events. Incentive contracts can also be included in the cost plus or fixed price contract. This means certain cost or target is met, then the contractor gains an extra fee. So let's discuss into mixed contract or mixed contract are mixer of all the above three types of contract described. For example, a cater could be contracted for a fixed fee plus cost with a percentage of the profit. This feature or mixed contract actually spreads the risk. It requires skill to negotiate to the satisfaction of all the parties and it could result in loss of trust and goodwill. In the formation of a contract, it is advisable to secure the services from legal professionals. Let's check on to contracts required by an event management company. Different stakeholders have different system requirements that meet their need to perform the specific set of a task. The terms and condition, clauses and riders are to be predicted which are specific to the concerned stakeholders so as to formulate a sound business contract aligned to their operational needs. Some of these contracts required by event management companies are entertainment. Usually entertainment contract has rider as a feature. A rider are the attachment which are annexed to the original contract. The original contract often contain a clause requiring the event company to provide the goods and services contained in the rider. Along with the performance fee, the riders include things such as technical specification, example microphone facility, lighting specific, hospitality specification like uh, food drinks, etc. Another one is venue contract. The venue contract will have special clauses including indemnify the venue against damages, personal requirements and provision of a security staff. The contract can also contain the following elements such as security deposit, penalty for cancellation of the event, access to authorized area, timings for the access through entrance, penalty for the event going over time, free tickets for the venue management, permission for alteration to internal structure and usage of a promotional material. Another one is sponsor. Sponsor contract covers aspects related to quality representations of the sponsor such as logos and signages, exclusivity and right of refusal for further sponsorship. The contract may specify that the sponsor's logo be included on all promotional material or that the sponsor has a right to monitor the quality of the promotional material. Another one is broadcast. The important aspect in the broadcast contract include broadcast area that means local, national and international. A clause stating that the event company has the right to sign for the whole event. We can discuss on contract management process. The stages of a contract management process include negotiation, specification, contract and administration. Let's discuss about negotiation. Negotiation is a contract in deeds to achieve the goal for arrangement of all the involved parties without compromising the objectives of each party. Negotiation is discussing, clarifying, expectation, bargaining and arriving at a common ground rather than enforcing decisions. Let's see what is background. Understand the client or suppliers increases the bargaining power and enables us to identify how valuable is our event to them. Background research also help us to understand how far to go to negotiation. Basic research pertaining to their competitors, position in market in past few years, business scale, current business in hand and potential customers help to understand the background of the client and suppliers. Negotiation at the right time is also a strategical tool to work out best result. Next is precedence. Precedence refer to any similar successful 
contracts which can be used as a powerful argument and referred to during the negotiation. Therefore, one should be very careful while framing the contract as the contract should not set the precedents which are regretted later on. For example, reducing or increasing the fee will be difficult once the precedent has been set. Another one is partnering. Partnership freezes when the involved party after negotiation feel comfortable and are happy with the agreement. The successful partnering is an event execution signifies that all the involved parties take stakes in event and will mutually benefit from the event. Hence the concept of a partnering is not just negotiation but it means working towards common goals and uh, taking ownership. Next is breach of event contract and liability thereof. Before discussing this topic, let's discuss on the basic breach of contract. It is a legal cause of action and a type of civil wrong in which a binding agreement or bargained for exchange is not honored by one or more parties to the contract by non-performance or indifference with the other party performance. Breach of contract can be divided into two. First one is anticipatory breach of contract where the promiser refuses to perform his obligation even before specified time for performance and signifies his unwillingness, then there is an anticipatory breach. Second one is actual breach of contract, where one of the parties breaches the contract by refusing to perform the promise on due date. It is known as actual breach of contract. There are five major types of remedies available. Suit for damages, or compensation. The insured party has a remedy to claim for damages and losses suffered by it. Suit for injection. Injunction is an order of the court which prevents a wrongful act or restrain the performance of a particular act. Third remedy is recession of contract. When one party to the contract breaches the contract, the other party will be discharged from performing his part of the obligation. The fourth one is suit for quantum merit. Quantum merit is the Latin word what one has earned. The aggrieved party can file a suit upon quantum merit and may claim payment in proportion to the work done or a good supplied. The last one is suit for specific performance. As its name says, specific performance means the actual carrying out of the duties as agreed in the contract by a court of law. Let us discuss on alternate dispute resolution, ADR. ADR is a method which follows the parties to sit down together sometime with a qualified and trained third party to come to an agreement. The method includes negotiation, mediation, conciliation and arbitration. Negotiation, it is the simplest form of ADR wherein the disputing parties converse with each other with the purpose of arriving and settlement. Mediation is on the another hand, a neutral third party intervene and introduce to facilitate the process but it does not impose the solution. The parties select the mediator and the mediator assists the party to understand the dispute, provide structured discussion and to help the parties to reach a dispute settlement agreement. Next one is conciliation. Like mediation, conciliation also uses a neutral third party to facilitate the process but here the conciliator is seen as an authority figure responsible for determining the best solution for parties. Next one is arbitration. It is a neutral third party called as arbitrator or a panel of arbitrators is chosen by the opposing party. The arbitrators listen to each disponent and make a decision that is binding on them. The cost of arbitration is disposed of a part of a settlement. Contracts and agreement take place between the event stakeholders. Contracts can happen between the producer and the client or between the producer and the suppliers. Contracts serve as a legal document stating the expectation of the involved parties and the strategies to resolve the negative situation. Realizing the importance of a contract in event management this unit has focused on element of a contract, contract development process and contract management process including dispute resolution 
and claim settlement. Hope you had got an insight on contracts and its application in event management industry. Thank you.